Hi guys, I'm back with uh, part 2 of the uh, open Alda configuration. So yesterday in my last video I show you how to configure open Alda app server. So today I will tell you how you will configure a client of open Alda app. Okay. So on the client side you just log in a client as you can see this is my client and 30. Okay. So you have to install one package. Install open aldap clients star and ss dot tam dot aldap the star. It will install a few packages. Okay, that's required. After install this package, there is a one utility that called not config tui. Just open this, and here you can use this one. Use aldap, and uh, you can use this one. Now go to next. What is a use TLS? TLS is stands that's a secure one. If you use TLS, then you have to use aldap. S instead of simple aldap so await this because we did not configure TLS level okay so here we have to put the entry of our server 192.168.10.128 okay what was the name of my domain domain controller is a technical tag and net okay mm. good to go this is giving a message as Linux is disabled so it's just simple message it is not a warning um, you know error or something so after this, that means our this client is integrated with our ALDAP server. How we cross check? Okay, now let me show you. It is a best password. Can you see that? There is no any user testing one, testing two. Okay, so I will run a command just to cross check. It's GNT password and if you remember my username is testing okay it's showing me a testing and then the another is testing two and now I will show you here on a lab server etc password you can see it's this and this this you can see one zero one and one zero one it's fetching the information from the LDAP server. Okay, so now let me log in with the user. Testing one. It's giving me error. Why? Because we did not import home directory. So avoid this message. Even now you cannot even run any commands because you don't have any home directory just exit from here now just go back to on server okay and on the server level we have to make some more configuration as you know how we can share any mount point we use the NFS okay One, install RPC point start NFS hyphen U details stop. Okay, my pack is gonna install. Okay, now how can we copy this ADC export? Okay, after it is the export. Before that, let me enable my services
system CTL start RPC point and NFS let them open for permanent so that when the system go to reboot we can oh my bad okay got it let's enable now what we need to do we go with this insert just home slash space star we drive okay and then save the file okay system cdl restart rpc pc point nfs okay now just just cross check Oh, it's working. Open our lab server and client. Okay, now I'm come back to client. On the client, we have to install this package. Star NFS hyphen U till star. Okay, my pet is gonna install. Just service restart RPC point. Okay, and just make it enable. Let's just show the command hyphen E nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot eight. Oh, I can see. Okay, now. We can run the command mount 192.168.10.198 uh, home slash home. Wow, we got mounted. Now just log in with the user. Delete session. Testing one. Testing one. Sorry. Wow, successfully login. PWD says home and testing. This is completely okay. Let me sync it. So here is no file, right? Let me run a command that shared. Let's just for testing. I create a one file shared, it will automatically sync with my LDAP server. Now, let me go to my this is my LDAP server, okay, and go to home directory of testing unless you can see here I create on client and it automatically sync on my server so this is a temporary uh, whatever we install mounted so make it permanent for the entry in FS tab 192.168.10.8 10 dot entering it so that's home and the mount point also so that's home file system in nfs del is comma that net dev what does it mean net dev net dev is nothing when your system is gonna reboot, actually, your etcfs tab file is read before your LAN card gets up, and then that time, if your system going to connect the NFS server, it will not able to connect because your LAN card is not up, so your NFS gonna fail, and when you will log in, you will not able to see this. So net dev it is a netfs actually a service 
which indicate your server that you have to read this entry after your LAN card get up okay so that you will get your mount point when you log in on your system okay yeah the home is already mounted now as I already show you let's log in again testing testing okay let me reboot the system so that we can find this again after reboot so meanwhile when my system gonna reboot I will just tell you one thing when you have a big environment for example you have thousands of users so do not use a FS tab use AutoFS what a difference between FS tab and AutoFS FS tab mount the mount point permanently but AutoFS it will mount your file system when it's required and there is a one option that's it called timeout which you define you can define that for example if your user is not using mount point for 30 second maybe 60 second it is an idle state NFS mount point gonna disconnect automatically but when he going to again login it automatically mount so what is the benefit for that so there is no unnecessary load on your server for example if you're 1000 server right and all servers are just mount your you know NFS server mount directory so a lot of hits on your NFS server right which degrade the performance of your NFS server okay now let me check my you can see after reboot my this mount point is already up okay now let me log in again biggest session testing testing okay it's successful working okay so I'm using here FS tab because it's just testing okay just a practical in the lab I have only one user so that's why I'm using etc FS tab so I recommend you when you are going to implement this server this open our lab on the production do not use etc FS tab so I would suggest go for auto FS so I'm not going and tell how to configure auto fs might be we will make a video for that when we will we will discuss about how to configure nfs and there is a different method how to mount on a client side there is two method one is it is fs tab and one there is auto fs and then we will explain on that so just wait for that video and this video is enough so Thanks for watching my video. If you find this video helpful, please share with your friends and like and give your comments and subscribe to the channel so that you can get update latest video of technical tech channel and you will not miss important videos. Technical tech channel make all the videos based of real scenario okay whatever use in the market and whatever use in the company okay guys see you in the next video thank you